Jewel. Hey. Okay, I'm gonna ask you to name some words to make a silly story. Then I'll doodle what you say. How does that sound? That sounds great. All right, first, name any animal you can think of. I would probably say a giraffe since a giraffe's giraffe. necks are really long and they can see far distances over the African okay, savanna. Okay, a giraffe. All right, let's start with a long neck. Can you tell me something you wear? I normally sometimes when I play baseball, I wear like a jersey. Okay, a jersey. Hmm, does your jersey have a number on it? Um, number 10. Number 10. Now that you've told me that, I need an object. Any object you can think of. A gate. A gate, like, okay. So like it would be like a zoo where you can see the giraffe? Okay, a gate. That's a good one, Joel. Okay, let's, let's put a gate on this thing. I need a food. Can you name any food? A food you all Salad. Eat. Salad? Okay, all right. Salad is our food. Hmm, okay. Now, tell me a place that you can think of. Any place in the whole world. Um, Egypt. Egypt. Be, Ooh, that's would, a good place. It would describe the, um, the habitat for the giraffe. Okay, smart. Okay, Joel, your noodle doodle is all done. You ready to see it? Yes. Okay, here we go. There wow. it is. All right, let me tell you a story. So, we have a giraffe wearing a jersey with the number 10 on it, because it's your favorite, riding a gate <laughs> to a birthday party in Egypt where all of the animals ate salad. <laughs> what do you think about your noodle doodle? <laughs> I love it. Okay, you love it. What's your favorite part? I would probably say how you drew the long tongue. The long you, tongue? Yeah. Yeah. I try to keep it as accurate to a giraffe as possible. All right, will you like it? Yes. Awesome. <laughs> Exercise your brain by shouting out the answers to some brain teasers. How did the duck cross the river without getting wet? The river was frozen. What's green and smells like blue paint? Green paint. What word begins and ends with an E but only has one letter. An envelope. Thoughts are powerful little conversations you have in your head that no one else hears but you. You know, thoughts like, what if I fail my test? He's always making fun of me. Will my friends be there? My stomach hurts. I wanna go swimming. Thoughts can start off small and go away quickly or they can grow to be so big and so bad that they ruin everything about your day. Because we are born with the desire to do wrong things, most of our thoughts are not ones that please God. We think about ourselves a lot, and many times we will find ourselves thinking about things that aren't true or right. The devil tricks us into thinking lies, and if we don't pay attention, those thoughts can get us into big trouble and make us feel terrible inside. But God created us to have minds that think, and he gave us the ability to catch our thoughts. When we do, we can check them to see if they match what he says is right and true. God's words have power and can change any thought we have. And when we let him change the way we think, we'll see that thinking the way God thinks is totally what's best. Think about what is best. Memorizing verses from the Bible will help us remember what God says when we're checking our thoughts. Let's see if we can memorize this verse from Romans 12, 2 together. Say this after me. Don't live the way the world lives. Let your way of thinking be completely changed. Then you will be able to test what God wants for you. and you will agree that what he wants is right. Romans 12, 2. Now let's see if you can remember it after we cover up some words. Don't live the way the... Don't live the way the world lives. Let your way of thinking be completely... Let your way of thinking be completely changed. Then you will be able to then you will be able to test what God wants for you. And you will... And you will agree that what he wants is right. 
Romans 12, 2. Way to go! Everybody get on your feet. It's time to sing. Don't live the way the world lives. Don't live the way the world lives. Let your way of thinking be completely changed. Don't live the way the world lives. Don't live the way the world lives. Let your way of thinking be completely changed. I can think. I can use my mind to think about what is good. Think about what Don't live the way the world is Let your way of thinking be completely changed Don't live the way the world is Don't live the way the world is Let your way of thinking be completely changed I can think, I can use my mind To think about what is good Think about what is right has got a lot to say Our God says that The way we think has got to change Catch it, check it See what God has got to say Let Him change it you see there is no better way There is no better way Don't live the way the world is Don't live the way the world is Let your way of thinking be completely changed don't live the way the world is Don't live the way the world is Let your way of thinking be completely changed Don't live the way the world is Don't live the way the world is Let your way of thinking be completely changed Completely changed Great job! You can take a seat. So I've been thinking... About an awesome story from the Bible? You know it. Who's it about? A woman named Abigail. Hey! Now that's a new one. What's her deal? Well, she was married to a man named Nabal, and he was super rich. Like owned a fleet of airplanes, chilling with your personal butler and elevator in your castle kind of rich? Kinda. He had tons of land, a thousand goats, and three thousand sheep. Nabal and Abigail live in that billionaire lifestyle. Oh yeah! I'd be down for that. So one time, David... Wait, wait. David? As in the same guy who killed that giant warrior who was taller than, like, three rocket ships stacked together? Yes, same David that killed Goliath, but I don't think he was quite that tall. Anyways, Abigail's story takes place after that, but before David became king. Gotcha. So David and his men were traveling close to where Nabal and Abigail lived and they were starting to run low on supplies. Running out of cheese puffs. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. So David and Nabal went way back. David had even done some favors for Nabal in the past. So he decided to ask Nabal for some food and drinks for him and his men. Hitting up his bro. Smart. Yep. But when Nabal heard this, he pretended like he didn't know David at all. Huh. Nabal was being selfish and refused to help him. Oof, cold. Guess he ain't his bro no mo. Yeah, David was not happy. He kept thinking about all he had done for Nabal, and that made him angry. He wanted to get revenge, so he told his men to put on their swords. Um, just a heads up, Nabal. This guy that took down a giant one time is coming for you. I'd be like, here's a hundred burgers. Can I interest you in some pickles? Crushed ice in your Cokes, my man? Right. Meanwhile, one of Nabal's servants knew that what Nabal was doing wasn't the best thing. Mm -hmm. So he went to find Abigail, who was known for being kind and caring. And Abigail swoops in to save the day. Exactly. When Abigail heard what was going on, she probably had a million thoughts running through her head. Like, I've got to save my fam. What should I do? What is Nabal thinking? I'll never cook his favorite meal of shepherd's pie, curly fries, and brownies a la mode ever again. Maybe. 
But even in the middle of all the chaos happening around her and inside of her, Abigail was able to think about what the best thing to do was. I got it. Abby walked right up to Nabal like, put on that chef's hat and get the grill going. Nope. She acted quickly and handled things herself. She gathered up a lot of great things for David and his men as a gift. Abby coming through. Clutch. And without telling Nabal, she saddled up her donkey. She went out with all of her gifts to meet David and his men who were headed her way with swords drawn. Abort the mission! Mobile food delivery headed your way, David! Nope, she didn't turn around. Instead, she walked right up to David. What are you doing, Abigail? Um, they have swords! She wasn't scared. Instead, Abigail bowed down, fell at David's feet, and apologized for how her husband had acted. David was so surprised that he stopped and praised God for how kind Abigail had been to him. Because of her quick thinking, David didn't do something he would have regretted later. Phew, crisis averted. Yep. Abigail's choice to focus on thinking about what was best reminds us that we can do the same thing. Because we have sinful thoughts at times, we can sometimes make selfish choices. When that happens, God wants us to stop and ask Him to help us think about what is best. Everybody get on your feet! Strike a pose like the one you see on the screen. See if you can freeze and hold it before it's time for the next one. fun. Now take a seat. Meet Jamari. Jamari worked for 14 afternoons straight to build the longest, most extreme guinea pig maze in his backyard. He was adding the finishing touches and giving Gizmo and Mr. Munchalot tons of extra lettuce and carrots so they would have strength to get through the maze. That's when the unthinkable happened. His neighbor, Rivers, crashed his four-wheeler into part of the maze and messed up the entire thing. It'll take at least a week to get it put back together. Rivers said it was an accident, but Jamari thinks he did it on purpose. Jamari gets angrier and angrier. He never wants to talk to Rivers again, and he starts thinking about ways to get revenge. He imagines putting tons of toilet paper in the neighborhood pool and convincing everyone that it was Rivers who did it. Then Rivers will probably lose his four-wheeler driving privileges for the next two years. That'll teach him. On second thought, if everyone finds out it was really Jamari who did it, he'll be cleaning up soggy toilet paper all by himself for the entire summer. Or Jamari can catch his thoughts and check them by thinking about what God says is best, like turn away from evil and do good, or be kind and compassionate to one another forgiving each other, just as Christ forgave you. After Jamari checks his thoughts, he can let God change the way he's thinking so he can do what's best for himself and for Rivers. And if he's having a hard time doing that, he can pray something like, God, please change my thoughts. The world tells us we should stay mad or get back at others when they do something wrong to us. But that's not what's best. It will only end up hurting others and leaving us feeling awful inside. Instead, when we let God change our thoughts, we'll find ourselves thinking about forgiving others and doing what He says is best. Think about what is best. Everybody get on your feet. It's time to sing. Love like you love 
Take a seat. Recap what we've learned today in exactly 10 words. No more, no less. God can help me think about what is best when seahorses. What? When? My. Mine. Is. Racing? I'll ask God for help. Yay! Yay! When unkind thoughts pop into my mind, God can change. Whoops! <laughs> Abigail helped stop David from getting revenge on Nabal. Um, yahoo! We, we did, did it. it, we did it! Let's practice catching a thought, checking it, and changing it. What is something you've been thinking about a lot lately that's made you feel sad, or worried, or scared, or mad? Maybe you've been thinking about something that someone said to you, or something scary that you saw on TV. Pick one thought that comes to mind. Pretend your thought is a balloon. Now squeeze one hand like you're catching string on the balloon. Hold on to your thought balloon and let's check it by asking God what he thinks. So tell God what's in your thought balloon and how it makes you feel. Ask God to show you what you should be thinking about. Since you've talked to God about your thought, you can let it go now. Just open up your hand like you're letting go of the balloon. Great job! The next time you have a thought that makes you feel sad, worried, scared, or mad, this is one way you can catch it, check it, and change it. Think about what is best. <laughs> 